Hello friends, this video on relations and functions part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 30. We'll take some example. There's a function from n to y. So there's a function from n to y. You have n here and you have y here. All natural number and we have y here. And this function is fx is equal to 4x plus 3. That means for every x, it has 4x plus 3 here. Correct? And the range of y is nothing but this is 4x plus 3 form only where x is a natural number. So if you take x is equal to 1, x is equal to 1, this is 4 into 1, 4 plus 4 into 1 plus 3, this is 4x plus 3, this is 7. This is a mapping here. If you take x is equal to 2, the mapping will be 4 into 2, 8 plus 3, that is 11. Similarly, so if you take 3, this will be 4 into 3, this is 12 plus 3, 15, and so on. And this is my the relation from n to y and y is nothing but any number that follows this pattern 4x plus 3 for any natural number. So this is my pattern. If you see here, this the question is first is we have to prove it is invertible. So for this function to be invertible, it has to be 1 over 1 and on the correct. And this approach is generally used when we are just supposed to prove it is invertible. We are not supposed to find inverse. So if we are just supposed to prove it is invertible, we can very well prove the function is 1 over 1 and on 2. If we can prove that, that means it is invertible. But when we are supposed to find inverse, we have to again find a function g that is equal to f inverse. Correct? Because here we are supposed to find g also. So what we have to do? We have to uh, first find a function g that is equal to f inverse. So let's define a function g. Let us define a function g, right? f was n to y, so this is from y to n. This is my function g, y to n. Correct? So here it was, if you see y is equal to 4x plus 3. So here if you take x, x will become nothing but y minus 3 by 4. Correct? So I define this. Uh, function g from y to n will say where g y is nothing but y minus 3 y this is the function I am defining function from y to n where g y is equal to y minus 3 by n where y is already defined y is any natural number where y follows this pattern y is equal to 4x plus 3 where x is some natural number the same one Correct. So once we have G defined, let's us find G O F and F O G. So if you can say that G O F is my I N and F O G is my I Y, then it means the function is invertible and G is my inverse. Please note, G O F is not I Y, it is always I X and F O G is not I X, it is always I Y. Tips to remember, if you see, the output will be in this function. G O F is nothing but G O F X. So this function G O F X is always giving me output in the form of X. So it is I X. F O G is nothing but F of G X and this function F X is always giving me output in the form of Y. That is Y. So, f of g will be i y and g o f will be i x. So, let's find g o f and f o g. So, g o f will be equal to g of f x. Correct? And g o f x is nothing but f x is nothing but 4 x plus 3. g of 4 x plus 3. And there is nothing but g of 4 x plus 3 will be 4 into y minus 3 by 4. There is 4 x in this much plus 3. Please pay attention here. 4 x plus 3, 
4. See, g of y is 4y minus 3. So, g of 4x plus will be 4 into y minus 3 by 4 plus 3. Sorry, it will be like this. g of y is y minus 3 by 4. This thing is whole is y. So, this is 4x plus 3. This whole thing is y minus 3 by 4. Correct? Because g of y is y minus 3 by 4 and y here is nothing but this guy, 4x plus 3. So, it will be 4x plus 3 minus 3 by 4. This gets cancelled and this gets cancelled. So, again, this is nothing but x. So, g o f is x and x I can say is nothing but I x. Similarly, f of g if I find this becomes f of g x. What is g x? x minus 3 by 4. That is f of x minus 3 by 4. Correct? Because gx will be x minus 3 by 4. Sorry, there is a mistake here. This is f of gx and this I have to find f of gy actually. See, g of x should be equal to ix and f of gy should be equal to iy. Correct? So, f of g of y should be equal to this. So, you can say this is nothing but f of gy and gy is nothing but y minus 3 by 4. And actually, gy is also nothing but x. Correct? gy is nothing but x. Why? Because gy is nothing but y minus 3 by 4. And y minus 3 by 4 is nothing but x. If you see, y is equal to 4x plus 3. So x comes out to be y minus 3 by 4. So y minus 3 by 4 I wrote as x. f of x is nothing but y. And that is nothing but i y. So what I have seen? g o f of x is equal to i x. f of o g of y is equal to i y. So this, this is true. So, what we can say that f is invertible. Since it is n to y, this i n x. And this i. Correct? So, what I have done here, I didn't prove it is 1 over 1 and not 2. If I prove that, it's again a waste of time because end of the day I am supposed to find inverse also. I can prove this also 1 over 1 2 but that was not required because I am supposed to find inverse also. So in that case what I will do, I took one function g from y to n and then I found g o f and f of g and I found g o f of x is equal to i n and f of g of y was equal to i y. And thus I can say that f is inverse. See by diagram if you want to remember, if you see this way, this was my function x, right? This is my n. From n to y I went and this became 4x plus 3. If there is an inverse function available, again I should be able to reach back to x. So if this function was called f, and let's suppose we assume this is a function called g, which again make it to x, where I say g is equal to f inverse, then if you see g or f, g or f is nothing but you put this value in f, you get whatever you put. And then you again put this this way, g o f is equal to i x, correct? Because I am getting i n back, this is all i n, this is n, right? So if, if g o f is i n, in the reverse way also if you see f of g. So if you take this fashion, you start from uh, 4x plus 3, you reach x, then again you make back to 4x plus 3, you see, so this is uh, my function g, this is my function f, this is my n, this is my, sorry, this is my n, and this is my y, and this is my y. So if I start from here, and I take, in this case, f of g, because first I am taking g, and then I am taking f, f of g, f of g also should become this guy, i y. So if my f of g is i y, if both are true, that means the function is invertible.
getting what I'm saying? From this was the F. From there, I took one G to to take back to bring back X to X. From X, it became four X plus three. I wrote a function G, which again made it X. Similarly, here also there's a function four X plus three. It made to X. I again created a function which made it to four X plus three. If both ways is true, that is G O F. This gives I A I N actually I N. And f of g, this function, this gives i y, then the function is invertible. Let's take some example. y is equal to n square, when n is the number of natural number, and it's a subset of the bigger natural number. So we have a function n to y, where f n is equal to n square, we have to prove that this invertible also we define in the if we are asked to prove only invertible, we could have proved that this function is one one on top. But since we are asked to find the inverse also, we will not go by that approach. What we will do is, we will create one more function g. See here what is told is, there is a function from n to y, there is a function from n to y. This guy is a function from n to y. And if it is n here, this becomes n square here. Correct? And y is nothing but n square, whereas n is number of n. I have to create a function g, but it will again take n square and make it n. This was y, so this should also become n. So the function g I should define as from y to n, correct? And if you see, y is equal to n square here because this function is making n to n square. n is nothing but root of y so here g of y will be root of y so whatever value it takes example n square it will create a root and this it will get n so that is my new function now that is the function i defined now to prove it is invertible i have to again find g o f of x and i have to prove this is nothing but i of n and f of g of y that has to be equal to i of y. Correct. So these two things I have to prove. So let's find g o f of x. So this is nothing but g of f x, and f x is nothing but g of x square. Correct. And g of x square is nothing but Right, root root of x square. So this becomes x. Correct. The second thing is f of g. This is nothing but f of g x. This is nothing but f of g x is nothing but f of g x is nothing but g x is nothing but root y. So f of root y. What is the value of root y? Root y is nothing but x. This is f of x. And f of x is what? f of x is x. And this if you see all square term is nothing but i y. And this is nothing but i n. So what I have seen? g of x, g of x is equal to i n and f of g of y is i y. This is, this is true, I can say that f is invertible and f inverse is nothing but g. And that is my answer. And g is nothing but I told g is nothing but y to n where g y is equal to and y obviously is y defined, y is nothing but n square and n is the number of natural number and the whole thing is subset of natural number. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.